Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil mursaleen. Sayyidina wa habibina wa shafi'ina. Wa qa'idina wa qurrati ayunina sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Allahumma iftah alayna fatuh al-arifin. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana. يا أرحم الراحمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم today إن شاء الله we will uh, start with حديث number 27 البر والإثم righteousness and uh, سيدنا النواس عن النواس بن سمعان رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال البر حسن الخلق والإثم ما حاك في نفسك وكرهت أن يطلع عليه الناس So on the authority of uh, النواس بن Ibn Sam'an radiyallahu an that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said righteousness is good character. Righteousness is in good character. And wrongdoing is that which wavers in your heart and which you dislike people finding out about or know it, knowing it. There is another narration that says, وَعَنْ وَابِصَطَ بْنِ مَعْبَدٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَالْ أَدَيْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَقَالْ جِئْتَ تَسْأَلُ عَنِ الْبِرِ قُلْتُ نَعْمْ فَقَالْ إِسْتَفْتِ قَلْبَكَ البر ما اطمأنت إليه النفس واطمأن إليه القلب والإثم ما حاك في النفس وتردد في الصدر وإن أفتاك الناس وأفتوك So وابصة uh, وابصة بن معبد uh, uh, This hadith is uh, on his authority He said uh, I came to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you have come to ask about righteousness. And I said, yes. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, consult your heart. Righteousness is that about which the soul feels at ease and the heart feels tranquil. And wrongdoing is that which wavers in the, in the soul and causes uneasiness in the heart. Even though people have repeatedly given their legal opinion, in its favor. So what's, what's the idea here? In this hadith, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um, is not defining what righteousness is, but he is mentioning its essence. And the essence is righteousness, is good manners. So this is what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is talking about in this hadith with its two different narrations. SubhanAllah, dealing um, with others in a good way is essential to good manners. And being good to the one who mistreats you uh, or forgiving the person who oppresses you and connecting with those who cut you 
these are all examples of good manners. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the best person who have good manners. And Aisha radiallahu anha described Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by saying his manners were the Qur'an. كَانَ خُلُقُهُ Quran. So whatever is allowed in the Qur'an, he follows it. And whatever is not allowed, he abstains from it. It was simple, so simple for him, so easy for Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, whom we should follow his footsteps. So the more we read the Quran, the more we learn what's in the Quran and the good manners are, are one of the issues that has been mentioned over and over in the Quran. So we have to have good manners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by following his orders and by worshipping him. We have to have good manners with people by being kind to them and by not harming them. We also have to, 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 to have, we should have good manners with ourselves. And this happens by taking good care of ourselves, whether physically and spiritually. So we have to be aware of ourselves. And being aware of ourselves means that we have to take, uh, to take care of ourselves on two different levels, the physical level, and also the spiritual level. So it's not enough to feed the body. We have to feed the soul, the soul also. Um, Ibn al-Qayyim said, good manners are based on having four things. The first one is patience, then chastity, and courage, and then justice. So these are the basis of having good manners. So if we have any problem, any uh, affliction, any issue that is not as we uh, we love to be uh, to be put in then we show practice, we, we practice patience. And when we practice patience, then we are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything. So whether that thing is uh, uh, getting, uh, putting us in good conditions or in bad conditions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he sends afflictions, then the, the, he, he, then he is testing us to see how, how do we react. So showing patience is a very important good manners that we should have. And uh on the other hand on the other hand bad manners are based on having ignorance so if someone is ignorant then they they don't know what they are doing and ignorance leads to bad manners also desires if someone always follows the nafs, always follows the desires, then desires lead to bad manners. Why do you want to be patient? Why do you want to show justice? Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to do that? So ignorance 
and desires are the, the base for bad manners. So these two would lead to oppression. And oppression is normally caused by anger. So all these points, ignorance, desires, um, oppression, and anger are all bad manners. So when we have a sound heart, when we have a pure heart, we can differentiate between good manners and bad manners. We can differentiate between what's right and what's wrong, what's lawful and what's haram. So we have to work on our heart. We have to fix our heart. We have to remove the, the dunya from our heart so that it will be ready to be filled up with the divine light. Someone might ask, how can we develop good manners? The first point is that we have to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to keep in mind that we are all dying. So uh, it's okay that uh, uh, to, it's okay to say that's okay. There is uh, our trips are short. So our journey in this dunya is short, so we are not going to have issues and trouble with people. Even if they, even if they mistreat us, then we don't have the time to engage with fights with, with other people. So we have to know that we are all dying sooner or later. And we have to remind ourselves with death every time. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu used to say, Kafa bil mawti wa'idhan ya Umar. So, death is an advisor, O oh Umar. Another way of uh, developing good manners is to have good companions. And the, the importance of a good companion is that uh, they, they would give us an advice. So when, uh, when, we, uh, when we talk to them, when we see them, then their status is conveyed to us. So having good companions would uh, encourage us to, to be good and to have good manners. So when we see them uh, doing something good, then we feel shy to do something bad. And even if we do something bad, they advise us for the sake of Allah and nothing, nothing else. Just for the sake of Allah. And another point of developing good manners is to have ihsan. And we talked about ihsan over and over in previous hadiths, uh, that which means أن تعبد الله كأنك تراه فإن لم تكن تراه فإنه يراك. So to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see him. But if you don't see him, then he is definitely seeing you. And you feel ashamed to, to do something or to say something that would not be 
pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So having ihsan is another way that would help us develop good manners. And of course, uh, having knowledge of good of, of the good manners of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is our best help. So we have to know about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to understand his character. We have to know his, his merits. We have to know how he dealt with third, certain issues so we can imitate him. So I think uh, we can we can uh, move now to um, to this to the following hadith uh, in which Abi Najih al Irbad ibn Sariya رضي الله عنه قال وعظنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم موعظة وجلت منها القلوب وذرفت منها العيون. So. Amin Ajih al ibn Musariya said that one day the messenger of Allah delivered a very eloquent khutbah for which eyes shed tears and hearts were full of fear. So those who, who heard this, this khutbah, who heard this uh, ceremony, uh, they said, Ya Rasulullah, كأنها موعظة مودع. O Prophet of Allah, this is as if it were a parting device. فأوصنا. So advise us. We ask you to give us an advice. It's a very special time that we felt our hearts are, are, are touched. And our ears are shedding tears. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أُوصِيكُمْ بِتَقْوَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَالسَّمْعِ وَالطَّاعَةِ وَإِنْ تَأَمَّرَ عَلَيْكُمْ عَبْدْ So I admonish you to fear Allah. To listen and to obey, even if a slave is appointed as your ruler or as your leader. You have to obey your leader. And this involves not only the leader of the country, or, but also if, if uh, there are three or four people traveling together, there should be an emir of, uh, among them. And that leader should be listened to. So it is important to appoint someone to be a leader when any group of people over two are going or traveling or uh, uh, doing something together. وَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يَعِشْ مِنْكُمْ فَسَيَرَ اخْتِلْهَفًا كَثِيرًا And who, whosoever among you shall live after me, that person will see much dispute. And uh, if we look at uh, our life uh, uh, these days, so many disputes around us. People are fighting each other for trivial things. Things are not going smoothly. And if we relate this to the previous hadith, uh, the reason for that is not practicing good manners fully. So we take things uh, against, uh, 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 we take things personally. And we don't take things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why we have the disputes. Okay. So, so what happens 
what's the advice of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي وَسُنَّتِي الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِيِينَ عَضُّوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِذِ وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحْدَثَاتِ الْأُمُورِ فَإِنَّ كُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ so these are the, this is the advice that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is, is giving. So, hold fast to my sunnah. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once said, I am leaving two things for you. If you hold fast to them, you would never go astray. The Quran and my sunnah. So here the emphasis is on the sunnah. And the example of the rightly guided caliphs. So hold fast to them. And to hold fast to those rightly guided caliphs who came after Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have to know them. We have to, to read about them. We have to, to, to read their stories. We have to learn from them. We have to learn from their wisdom. So the advice of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, adhere to them. Adhere to those rightly guided caliphs who came after Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and hold to it fast. So just follow them. And another advice, beware of new things in deen. Be aware of innovations because Every bid'ah, every innovation is a misguidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. I have completed your religion. So there is no space for innovations. You have to know that the religion is completely fast, completely, completely uh, comprehensive. So the advice is sticking to the sunnah guarantees for us the best of lives. So in this hadith, as we just mentioned, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, encourages people to do good and asks them to be away from, from doing bad deeds. So the words of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, they, they, they have the meanings of, I enjoin you to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is ordering us. He is commanding us to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And taqwa means to that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will find you where he wants you to be and will miss you where he wants you not to be. So he says, go to, to mosques, then he will find us there. And he will say, uh, 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 do not go to bars, he will miss us there. So when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, hold to it fast, it means that it's not easy to do that. But we have to do our best to do it. Because if it's, it's something easy, then he will not give us an advice to do it. If something is easy, it's easy. So when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said hold to it, then we have to, 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 to do our best 
to, to do what he wants us to do. And one more thing, when we said that when uh, uh, at the beginning, the Sahaba were listening to the eloquent khutbah of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We remember, we, and we saw how, how short this advice that he gave us. So we, we, w when someone is giving a khutbah, then make sure that this khutbah is not so long that people would get bored. No, make it short and attractive. Make it so meaningful, make it so powerful. And do the same as Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Just say what is needed. And we all know that uh, the words of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are of simple expressions with comprehensive, with, with comprehensive intelligence. So we have to do to follow the footsteps of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when uh, delivering a khutbah, when giving a nasiha, and so that we attract people and we don't make them get bored. Okay, moving to the, to the next hadith, hadith 29. عن معازن بن جبل رضي الله عنه قال قلت يا رسول الله أخبرني بعمل يدخلني الجنة ويباعدني عن النار So Muaz ibn Jabal may Allah be pleased with him reported that he asked the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم to inform him of an act which will cause him to enter Jannah and to be away far from hellfire. So what did Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? قَالَ لَقَدْ سَأَلْتَ عَنْ شَيْءٍ عَظِيمٍ وَإِنَّهُ لَيَسِيرٌ عَلَى مَنْ يَسَّرَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَلَيْهِ So Sayyidina Muhammad said, his reply was, you have asked me about a matter of great importance. But it's easy for the one whom Allah makes it easy for. So what was the answer? To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and associate nothing, no one with him in worship. So this was the first point. To offer or to perform a salah, the prayer. So this is the second point. Then, and to pay the zakah. And the reason for paying the zakah is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has assigned a certain amount of money in the wealth of the, the rich so that he would give he would give away to the poor so that the zakah is a way of helping the poor. So this is another point. And to observe or to fast, to observe some or to fast during the month of Ramadan. And to perform Hajj, pilgrimage, to the house of Allah if you can afford it. So this is the advice that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave to Mu'az ibn Jabal when he asked him for something that would get him into paradise and to keep him away from his fire. 
Then Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam added, Ala adulluka ala abwabi al-khayr? Shall I now guide you to the gates of goodness? So what are these gates? As-sawmu jannah. Fasting is a screen from hellfire. So we have to practice fasting not only during the Ramadan, but also the Nafil fasting. Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, used to fast every Monday and every Thursday. So they said, why? Ya Rasulullah, why do you fast every Monday? And he said, this is the day I was born in. And they said, what about Thursday? He said, so the, the deeds of people are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Thursday and I would love to be fasting when my deeds are being expressed or shown to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what else? So the doors of the gates of goodness, the first one is As-Sawmu Jannah, fasting is a screen from hellfire. وَالصَّدَقَةُ تُطْفِئُ الْخَطِيئَةَ كَمَا يُطْفِئُ الْمَاءُ النَّارِ Charity extinguishes or removes the sins the same way water extinguishes fire. Subhanallah. So when someone sins and he wants to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let that person get, give some sadaqah. This sadaqah extinguishes the sin, removes the sin. The same way the water extinguishes fire. وَصَلَاةُ الرَّجُلِ مِنْ جَوْفِ الليل. And another way, another gate of goodness is standing in prayers uh, during the last third part of the night. So this is called the night prayer. Now everyone is, is, is asleep, but you are awake, spending the best of time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if someone uh, loves someone, they like to spend time with them, but they want the time that nobody would aggravate them, that nobody would bother them. And this is the time of the night when everyone is sleeping. Then Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, recited the uh, two ayahs of uh, uh, 16 and 17 of Surah Al Sajda. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Tatajafa junubuhum anil madaji yadhuna rabbahum khufan wa tama'an wa mimma rizaknahum yunfiqun. They arise from their beds, which is the night prayer. They supplicate their Lord in fear and aspiration. And from what we have provided them, they spend. فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَّا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنٍ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And no soul knows, that, uh, knows what has been hidden for them of comfort, of coolness for eyes as a reward for what they used to do. Then, 
Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Muaz, Ala ukhbiruka bi ra'si al-amri wa abudihi wa zurwati salamih. Shall I tell you of the root of the matter, its pillar and its highest point? And of course, Muaz radiallahu anhu said, Yes, certainly, O Prophet of Allah. فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رأس الأمر الإسلام So the messenger of Allah said the root of this matter or the foundation of this matter is Islam. Its pillar is الصلاة and its highest point is الجهاد fighting for the sake of Allah. So this is called al-jihad, but there are several ways of jihad. Every day we practice jihad. So every day we fight for the sake of Allah. So jihad is the fighting of the whispering of shaitan and the whispering of the nafs. This is called fighting for the sake of Allah. So, shaitan would whisper for a person to do what is not lawful, what is not allowed. So, we have to fight against the whispering of shaitan. And we have to fight against the whispering of the nafs. So when, when we want to do good things, let's say, for example, praying, and we want to uh, pray fajr, we want to wake up, especially during winter, we want to wake up at night, we want to make wudu, we are so cold, we want to stand in prayer. So this is fighting against the whispering of the nafs and the shaitan, which they will say, okay, you still have time, you don't need to wake up when it's so cold, you don't need to take your comforter off, it's so cozy in bed. So this is jihad. This is fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam added, thumma qal, ala ukhbiruka bi malaki zalika kulli? Shall I tell you of that which hold all these things? And Muaz radiallahu anhu said, Bala ya Rasulullah. Yes, O oh Messenger of Allah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa'akhadha bi lisanihi wa qal kuffa alayka hadha. So he took hold of his tongue and said, keep this in control. And we see how problems, misunderstanding, they all happen because of the words that are said by the tongue. So many people misunderstood, misunderstand each other because they use their tongue before they use their head, before they use their brain, before thinking of what they are hearing. So they misunderstand people. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is advising uh, Mu'az and of course advising us to keep the tongue in control. And we have to know that once a word is said, it, you cannot take it back. It's not like something you did and you, you can uh, change. You said a word. 
no matter what this word might have, what the effect of this word might be. Did it hurt anybody? And did it, or did it comfort be, uh, anybody? So we have to keep control of our tongue. So I asked Sayyidina Mu'az is saying, قُلْتُ يَا نَبِيَ اللَّهُ وَإِنَّا لَمُؤَاخَذُونَ بِمَا نَتَكَلَّمُ بِهِ Oh, Messenger of Allah, shall we be really, shall we really be accounted for what we talk, for what we talk about? And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, ثَكِلَتْكَ أُمُّكَ يَا مُعَاذِ وَهَلْ يُكَبُّ النَّاسُ فِي النَّارِ عَلَى وُجُوهِهِمْ إِلَّا حَصَائِدُ أَلْسِنَتِهِمْ so this is an expression that the Arabs say, may your mother lose you. So uh, people will be thrown on their faces into the hellfire on account of their tongues. This is, this is the advice of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that people should control their tongues. Sometimes someone would say a word, he doesn't mean to hurt people, but, but the words that he said were so heavy on the heart of people. So the easiest thing to do is to think before you say the words. If someone said the same words to, you, to, to, to me, will I be happy to hear them? Or will I be offended? Will I be hurt? So think before you say your words, how they would affect the heart of the one who is listening to you. So keep control of your tongue. The last hadith that we will be uh, uh, talking about today is عن أبي ثعلبة الخشني رورثومي بن ناشر رضي الله عنه عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن الله تعالى فرض فرائض فلا تضيعوها. So, uh, Abu Thalaba رضي الله عنه reported that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, God has made certain things binding. فرض فرائض فلا تضيعوها. So do not cause them to be lost. Just be mindful. وحد حدودا فلا تعتدوها. And he has prohibited certain things. So do not violate them. When you know something is haram, خلاص haram is haram. Keep away from it. Because when you do the haram, you don't want people to see you doing the haram. And this is related, this can be related to the first hadith that we started with today. So you see the hadith that we are studying in Al-Imam Al-Nuwawi's Al-Arba'in al then they are related to each other. Okay, so do not violate the things that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited. And وَحَرَّمَ أَشْيَاءَ فَلَا تَنْتَهِكُوهَا And he has fixed certain limits. So do not transgress them. Do not if you know that uh, something is prohibited, خلاص. there is a limit. Do not exceed your limits. 
Do not give yourself a, an area where you can, okay, go around. No, there are limits for yourself. So be aware of that. Do not transgress these limits. Because once you do, problems will happen. وسكت عن أشياء رحمة لكم غير نسيان فلا تبحثوا عنها. So he has uh, uh, without being forgetful, he has said nothing about certain things. So do not search into them. Know your limits. This is the whole idea of the hadith. Do not exceed your limits. Do not transgress them. Do not search for things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not mentioned. So, once uh, one of the uh, people of Allah uh, it was said to him, do you not fear poverty? And he said, how would I fear poverty when my Lord has what is in the heavens and the earth and what is in between? So how? Then he said, Allah is the provider. So I know that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set some limits, I have to accept them. I have to know that everything happens is predestined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether whether I like it or not, this is reality. Whoever is content, then he will be pleased. But whoever questions and whoever asks and whoever says why, why, Ya Allah, I have this problem? Why, Ya Allah, I have this problem? No. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have this problem and you didn't have 10, 10, 10 more problems. Problems are, are nothing but tests for us. Allah wants to see how, how, what is the level of patience that we practice? What is the level of riba, of acceptance? that we practice. So we have to understand the limits. We have to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. It is, it is from the weakness of anybody's belief that he feels that what they are holding in their hands is more secure than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for them. So don't think that the medicine cures. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts the cure in the medicine so it can heal you. So we have to understand what Allah wants. We have to understand what Allah has said for us. And when we do that, then we live happily. Subhanallah, with this, we come to the end of today's session. Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yambaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu wa shukru wa ni'mata wa rida. We thank you, Ya Allah. And uh, inshallah, until we meet again next week, 
uh, I would I would leave you now by sending your salam and my salam and our best salawat to our beloved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.